Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in this evening's video we're going to have a look at the latest from Storm Arwen which is now clearing to our east and southeast. We'll also have a look at the potential for some more potentially wintry showers over the next 24 to 36 hours and also we'll have some very frigid temperatures over the next couple of nights as well so it's going to be some hard overnight frost as well. We'll also have a look at a longer term outlook. It is Still looking pretty chilly throughout the next few weeks. There's even potential we could be going into another northerly plunge in only around five days' time. Doesn't look as wintry as what we've seen in Storm Arwen, but it is looking pretty cold. And in the longer term, we're even seeing signs of a Scandinavian high and easterly winds. So... Do stay tuned for the end of the video, we'll have a look at that in more detail. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and remember to follow on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now, overnight last night, we had Storm Arwen move through. We did see significant effects from it, and unfortunately, I've heard so far that apparently two men have lost their lives due to... Um, issues with the wind with trees coming down as well many thousands of people have been without power as well so that red warning from the met office was warranted in the end now on the snow front we have seen significant accumulations across many parts of scotland and a slither down northern england it was a bit it was forecasted a, um, a bit further east than it actually turned out to be parts of northwest england into yorkshire and down into the north and West Midlands saw the most amount of snow. Elsewhere, we did see a lot of falling snow across southern England, parts of the East Midlands as well, into northeast England, but not accumulating too much, simply because the temperatures um, were a tad too high, um, around two or three degrees, and the most significant precipitation for the longest period of time fell a bit further westwards. So we get that evaporative cooling, and the longer the snow falls out of the sky, the more likely it is to set, of course, cooling down the surface conditions. But now we do have those weather fronts, the occluded fronts, clearing to our east, and we still do have some quite heavy precipitation in the east. And as I said, don't always follow um, the exact location of the snow and rain line, but roughly it, it will be correct. So we are seeing a bit of snow still on the western edge, but you can see it's not too heavy and it's not going to be particularly persistent. This is slowly easing eastwards and areas it's falling haven't seen too much accumulations already. So it may be falling out the sky in a few regions in the east, but I don't expect any significant accumulations. Of course, in the far east, we do have dew points slightly above freezing, so it's going to be falling as rain. Further north, we do have a lot of snow showers packing into the north. Um, not too unexpected, of course, with the northerly wind. We're going to be seeing some significant accumulations still over the Scottish mountains. But as I said, nothing too unusual for this. Now, if we do have a look at the 24-hour uh, the snowfall, um, which gives us a good indication where we did see the heaviest snow. Uh, now, if we just get that on, you can see where we saw the significant snow. Purple colours really showing where snow totals did uh, pile up across northern Scotland, eastern Scotland as expected, down into southern Scotland over the hills and across that slither down northern England into northwest England and the West Midlands as well. Especially over high ground, seeing the highest totals, but you can even see these darker blues down to sort of Birmingham, Wolverhampton, Staffordshire, seeing some accumulations. I've seen images as well of a couple of inches of snow. It will melt throughout the day, especially to low-lying areas as temperatures are a couple of degrees above freezing and the 0 to 10 centimetre um, depth uh, for soil temperatures is still above freezing, around 2 or 3 degrees. Because remember, we haven't had that much cold weather over the autumn, um, so the actual soil temperatures are not below freezing. So any snow that does accumulate, especially to low-lying areas, will uh, slowly melt away. You can see, though, elsewhere we've had a lot of falling snow. So this is where the radar has seen falling snow. And you can see quite widely we have seen falling snow across many areas. You may have not seen any falling snow because it may have fallen at 1, 2, 3 a.m. So some people will be a bit disappointed, but I do suspect some people in this region have been very surprised with the amount of snow they have seen, even to low-lying areas. Now, if we do have a look at the latest weather warnings, now we only have yellow warnings in force at the moment. We have a yellow warning for wind across many parts of England and parts of Northern Ireland and Wales as well. We're still going to be seeing gusts of 30, 40, 50 miles an hour. Could be some be a little bit disruptive in a few regions and of course we've had very strong winds overnight last night it could have uh, 
created some structural damage, some trees may be weakened, so even a weaker gust today could still cause some issues. We also do have a yellow warning that does move into tomorrow as well, and if we do have a look at that in detail, from 5pm this evening to 11am tomorrow, a cold night with icy stretches likely to form quickly through Saturday evening. Rain, sleet and snow showers will continue through Saturday evening and overnight to Sunday. These will turn to snow at times low level, but mainly over modest high ground with some small further accumulations. And of course, surfaces will remain wet from these showers with icy stretches likely to form readily Saturday evening. So yeah, we'll have to keep an eye really on what happens and it's very likely lower impact, but of course, do stay wary out there. There will be some ice around us. We are going to see a hard overnight frost tonight with temperatures in the north getting a few degrees below freezing. The coldest night we've had so far this autumn. Um, we may beat it into Monday morning and we'll have a look at that in a minute with the UK Met Office run. So now we do have a look at the UK Met Office run. Now this is the 3 o'clock run from this morning. You can see that heavy snow actually well forecasted by the 3Z. Of course, it was happened by the time this... Uh, came out but i do suspect the uk Met office run has done pretty well here it won't be exact because of course subtle shifts 10 mile shifts in air masses can create drastic differences in snow amounts but you can see generally across yorkshire into the west midlands where we saw the most uh, snow fall and of course you can see a few pinks mixing in with the general air of rain as well symbolizing some falling snow as well now, over the course of this afternoon into the evening, we have seen, of course, showers in the east, potentially snow further inland, but they will slowly clear this evening. Remaining in the far east, but not showing any snow there, with temperatures remaining a bit above freezing. Further west and north, with clearer skies, you can see a really quite cold overnight tonight. Now, something we do need to watch is what's happening in northern Scotland through early hours of Sunday. We're seeing this small feature move southwards with heavy snow over the higher ground. Now, of course, by Sunday evening, we're all in very cold air. So a lot of precipitation falling out of the sky will be falling as snow. And we are seeing this feature move southwards, a slither of precipitation moving southwards. And it could provide snow across many areas in the Midlands, into central southern England as well. And we need to keep an eye on that, um, really what happens with that. Because um, if I do snow, show you snow depth, we are seeing the potential for a bit of added accumulation. You see a few specks um, falling there. So, yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on that. That's cropped up on the recent model. Um, and we'll have to keep an eye for falling snow potentially tomorrow evening into early hours of Monday. Um, especially for those who have mixed out. Uh, missed out on the snow over the last 24 hours as con conditions are much more conductive for snow then. However, beyond that, we do bring weather fronts back in from the west and things look like they're going to be going milder and westerly. But by next Wednesday, you can see cold air is coming back in from north. It does look like it's going to be a brief northerly shot, but a northerly shot nonetheless. Now, if we have a look at max temperatures, you can see... In the east, we see in temperatures around 4, 5, 6 degrees. That's why it's still falling as rain. Further west, around 1, 2, 3 degrees, so cold enough for snow. Overnight tonight, temperatures are going to fall away very quickly in the west and the north. In the east, holding up around 4, 5 degrees, but still with those showers moving in um, and a bit more cloud. That's why those temperatures are holding up. But across the north and many western parts falling well below freezing around minus 1, minus 2 quite widely to city centres, potentially minus 8 or below that in a few spots over the hills in the north. Beyond that through Sunday, it's going to be a quite a frigid day for many. 2, 3, 4 degrees, probably colder than today, in fact, in terms of absolute temperatures, but it's going to be a pretty pleasant day. There's not going to be too many showers around, of course, until potentially Sunday evening, where we do see temperatures widely down to freezing around one or two degrees where we see that small feature move through um, holding the temperatures up briefly but for early hours of monday temperatures are going to really fall down down to minus two minus three degrees once again across many central areas down into south southern areas as well and across northern england not quite as cold as maybe minus eight but still really quite frigid and then through monday temperatures are going to be on the up However, in the day, it will still be 3, 4 degrees for many areas, maybe below freezing a few areas in the north. But through the evening, we could still see a little bit of a frost in the south, but it will be turning milder for Tuesday morning with much milder conditions moving in. However, by Wednesday, cold northerly winds returning, and you can see those frigid temperatures returning to the north. And early hours of Thursday, we could be seeing another widespread frost in the north and potentially cold conditions returning back for the south. Now, if we have a look at the longer term outlook, um, as I said, it is still looking pretty chilly 
throughout the rest of November and the start of December. Now you can see Storm Arwen is moving out to the east and we are going generally into a bit of a northerly flow. Quite slack and that's why we're going to be seeing the potential for some very harsh frosts of course. Beyond that though we eventually go into a bit more of a westerly wind but we see another ridge of high pressure go up towards Greenland. Not making it all, all the way, but we are going back into a cold northerly wind by next Wednesday, Thursday. So starting December on a really quite chilly note. And you can see the minus five line moving through quite widely. Again, wintry showers, especially on the northern and eastern coasts. And of course, every single time we have one of these northerly blasts, it does lower the temperatures on the North Sea and our land temperatures as well by a good degree or two. So... Every time we see one of these northerly blasts, this means the next northerly blast is going to be that much colder. So even though these don't look like they're going to be causing any major uh, snowfalls, which I know a lot of people uh, want, especially around Christmas time, it just means that if we do see a northerly blast around Christmas time, it could be that much colder than if we hadn't seen any northerly winds throughout the end of November and early December. Now beyond that, we maintain a bit of a westerly flow. Now it's not a really mild westerly flow, of course, but it is generally a westerly flow, so unsettled conditions. And of course, we are seeing these little sliding low pressure systems. And on the northern edge, we could be seeing some snow over higher ground. We're going to alternate between warmer and colder sectors. And we are seeing, towards day 10, as I said, the potential for a Scandinavian high building. Now, it's not going for a beast from the east pattern. But you can see we are starting to bring in easterly winds by the second week of December. And cold air, minus 10 line potentially getting through. And staying pretty frigid. For a good few days there before we start to see westerly winds start to try and move back in and that Scandinavian high breaking down going westerly right towards the end so very interesting seeing that for uh, the second week of December so still looking really quite cold um, below average at least and still a few decent cold uh, potential um, with that northerly wind and potentially an easterly wind with the Scandinavian high as well through the second week of December and we're also seeing something similar on the GM, and I'll show you that now. You can see, again, Storm Arwen moving away, quite frigid temperatures in the next few days, and generally a westerly wind before we see another northerly wind move in by next Wednesday into Thursday, with really quite cold air moving through. Only lasts a day or two for westerly winds crash down. And then we maintain through milder and colder sectors, but right towards day 10, we're seeing high pressure Ridge towards Scandinavia. Now we're not seeing a Scandinavian high come off yet, but we are seeing something similar with, uh, to the GFS. And of course, the GFS developed a Scandinavian high over the coming days after the GM run finishes. But you can see generally a northerly wind moving in, much milder around moving northwards, potentially building in that Scandinavian high. So very interesting seeing that. Seeing a repeated pattern here of high pressure trying to ridge northwards, never fully making it to lock us into a brutally cold spell um, like we were potentially hinting at maybe a week or two ago. But we are seeing this ridging, which um, if we weren't seeing, we'd be just keeping flat westerly winds. But it's encouraging because there's a very good chance that over the next few weeks, one of these ridges further northwards really does come off. Um, and... Even with Storm Arwen, we did see a quite a decent ridge in the middle of the Atlantic, but not quite getting up towards Greenland or Scandinavia, bringing in that brutally cold wind, uh, cold air that would have turned any precipitation to snow. So if we do see one of these come off, which is quite probable if we can see this repeatedly happen within the models, it would turn us much, much colder, potentially through the first few weeks of December. So we'll have to keep an eye, really, on what happens with that. Again, we're seeing some another similar pattern on the east of EF. That's why I'm banging on about this Scandinavian high and the ridging further northwards. You can see again, westerly winds moving in. There's been another ridge of high pressure with cold northerly winds pushing through. Generally westerly pattern for again, we're seeing this ridge towards Scandinavia. Now, it's not a classic cold spell at this stage. It is just a ridge. It's nothing major, not showing anything brutally cold. We're actually quite mild, but we've got very cold air just to our east. This moving northwards, building high pressure to our north, it would be turning us much colder if this did continue. So very interesting signs over the next couple of weeks. As I said, with the ridges moving northwards, we could be setting up quite a cold first, uh, well, end of November and first few weeks of December. It doesn't look like it's going to be sustained cold at this stage. There definitely does look like there's going to be westerly winds and milder sectors at times, but there definitely is more potential over the coming weeks 
for snow, especially further northwards. But as we head progressively through winter, the more we have these northerly winds um, periodically coming through, cooling the sea surface temperatures down, cooling land temperatures down, it does mean we could be seeing widespread snow events potentially through December if we see this pattern continue. As of course, as I said, every time we see one of these northerly winds, it becomes more and more likely we see more widespread cold conditions as everything cools down as we head into the depths of winter. Now, if we finally have a look at the GFS ensembles, you can see all of this well reflected, really quite cold at the moment. Then we see that brief um, rise in temperatures around the 30th to the 1st of December. And then we see another big cold plunge back down to minus 5 at 50 HPA. And then it stays below average for the foreseeable future over the next few weeks. You see the GFS operational run getting that cold easterly wind in. It's a bit of an outlier at this stage, but you can see the majority of the runs are around or below average. So having that jet stream either shifted further southwards or having these periodic northerly winds moving in. And below average temperatures um, will give a decent chance of maybe more snow further northwards. And of course, if we continue, as I said, with the ridges further northwards, we could be seeing more widespread cold uh, conditions. Because it just continues colder than average all the way through the first couple weeks of December. Now, I doubt it will be exactly as it's showing here. There's a lot of uncertainty, of course, a lot of mild runs, a lot of cold runs as well. But it just shows you the majority of the ensembles are going around or below average over the next few weeks precipitation isn't massively high so it does not symbolize a massive tropospheric polar vortex uh, moving in from the west with uh, pests from the west winds with a lot of low pressure systems that will happen at times of course as we see over the next few uh, next week or so we are going to see low pressure moving in from the west but with no massive precipitation signal at this stage it's not looking like it's going to be an absolute westerly uh, low pressure fest there is going to be some disruption which gives us a higher chance of colder conditions now if we do have a look at glasgow it gives us an idea further northwards of course you can see a very similar pattern, very cold at the moment, returning to around average for dipping down below minus five once again and staying around or below average all the way to around 6th, 7th December. It does briefly go above average, but there are a couple very mild outliers there. But of course, as we saw around the 7th, 8th of December on the GFS operation run and the GEM run in day 10 time frame, we did see some very warm air move further northwards as we built that Scandinavian high. So maybe those are what those ensemble members are showing, that Scandinavian high moving. You can actually see this blue uh, ensemble member here, very mild around the 9th of December, but you can see it plunging to minus 10 at 850 HPA by the 11th of December. And that would be warm air advecting further northwards towards Scandinavia before us bringing in a bitterly cold easterly wind. So we'll have to see how it does play out. It's looking very interesting over the next few weeks. This winter is definitely, at least the early part of this winter, is definitely going to be very interesting. There's going to be more snow potential around over the next few weeks. Um, so make sure you stay tuned to my forecast, uh, my videos, and make sure you do stay tuned to the Met Office weather warnings, as of course they are um, the official um, UK uh, weather um uh, well, weather institute and they will be giving a probably better forecast than i'm giving um and they do have the official warnings as well they have much uh, higher access to much more access to data of course and computer models so they're going to be probably a lot more accurate than i am and of course they did pretty well yesterday i must say with their warnings in terms of the wind warnings potentially the snow warnings not exactly um ex where we saw the heaviest snow and biggest accumulations but of course snow is so difficult to forecast especially when it is marginal so looking very cold over the next few days and very interesting for more wintry potential over the next few weeks so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon